I'm Prash Sanders. Uh, I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, uh, and I also hold the Knapman Chair of Cardiology at the University of Adelaide. As a cardiac electrophysiologist, I, I deal with the electrical system of the heart. That's slow heart rates, fast heart rates, and we treat this in different ways. Atrial fibrillation is where the heart stops contracting in a coordinated way. So what that means is blood doesn't empty through the heart as efficiently, and it tends to stagnate within the heart itself. And so biggest complication we're worried about is having a stroke. Uh, because the blood forms clots when it doesn't move around. But it also causes heart failure, it causes people to have blackouts, and probably more importantly, lots of people have symptoms from this that prevents them undertaking their daily activities. When we started noticing that the amount of atrial fibrillation in the community was going up, disproportionate to what we expected. And so we started looking at why could this be the case? And the obvious thing to identify is other things that increase at the same time. And obesity, for example, is one of those things that we're seeing in the, in the community. And so as part of our translational research program, we've been able to look at animals that became overweight and saw that it caused scar tissue to form inside the heart. And this is actually what happens in people. Uh, and so then the next question is, if we treat this or avoid this, can we reduce the incidence of scar tissue and reduce atrial fibrillation? That's exactly what we found in the clinic. So we run a lifestyle and risk factor clinic, which focuses on the individual trying to treat each risk factor that is important for that person. And what we've shown is that the amount of atrial fibrillation they suffer from reduces, they're able to get back to normal life, and even if they need a procedure to try and get rid of atrial fibrillation, the success rates in the long term are a lot better if they manage their risk factors. So we're focusing on weight, on exercise, alcohol consumption, diabetes, hypertension, smoking, and sleep apnea. These are things we can all focus on in terms of improving the health, not only for atrial fibrillation, but also for cardiovascular health in general. We have, by a series of studies, actually shown the importance of these factors for atrial fibrillation, and it's the first time this has been demonstrated. So in the past, we've looked at atrial fibrillation and thought, well, we need to thin the blood to avoid strokes. We need to control the heart rate so that people don't have symptoms. And then we've got a question, who do we need to put back into normal rhythm? And no one ever thought about how could we prevent or reduce atrial fibrillation by treating upstream. And so we've introduced this now into the literature and it's made its way into both the, the American Heart Guidelines, into the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines. And so it's now a standard of care and it's been called the first pillar of atrial fibrillation management. So this stems from our work here uh, at the Royal Adelaide. The aim of our research is really to give back people their lives so that they can continue to be functional in the community. They don't have as much of a burden of disease. They're not troubled in terms of their families having to care for them. We can avoid hospitalisation uh, and improve their health care. That's the goal of our research.